Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. Hey, joining me today, I have Norman Sanso. Hello. And Lycan. Hello there. And Brony Reviewer Extraordinaire, Silver Quill. Real men want to hug Big Macintosh. <laughs> I sure want to hug Big Macintosh. Oh, I, I think everyone does. Oh, uh, before we carry on, I have a special announcement to say. Starting from this point on, Silver Quill will be part of the show. He'll be a reviewer for the NBS show. Yay! Welcome to the crew, man. Welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy your show. Welcome to the show. You know now what you've unleashed. Uh, <laughs> take, take your mandatory picture. Now I hand you a picture that says it doesn't need to be, you don't need to be crazy to work here, but it helps. <laughs> Hang it on the wall. And here you have a basket full of treats. You have a bottle of water, uh, some bread, and a blind bag. We, we opened the blind bag. Actually, you know what? You don't, have, you don't have a blind bag because that's Rainbow Dash and I like it, so I kept it. But you get the box. You get the box of the blind bag. Good. There you go. All, all, all that's yours. Yay. Yay, I have a dead tree. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. Oh, yeah, ignore the plant. It's from the previous zone. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, James, why are we here? Why are we here? Ah, today we are reviewing, uh, we are actually into something that I, la- that I am going to call the Andy Price Katie Cook Continuum because we are going to be reviewing three comics done by them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to be reviewing the Big Macintosh arc, also known as Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair, drawn by uh, Andy, Andy Price and written by Katie Cook. And we are going to be reviewing the Rarity Micro, that is uh, Micro Issue 3 of the Micro Series, also drawn by Andy Price. I and written by Katie Cook. It's, it's it's like these guys are kind of like popular within the MLP comic or something. It's like, wow. It's like they're good at their job. Yeah, it's like they're good or something. It's like, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, I enjoyed this really, really much. Like, I <laughs> thought the book for the Big Bang arc is going to be a one-parter since, you know, it's a size of life, but they split it into two. And that was fun. That was fun. Let's go. Let's go around the table. See what everybody thinks. And like always, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna keep my opinion for last because mm-hmm. I tend to talk a lot. Okay. So, uh, you already said said yours. Uh, what about you guys? What did you think of it? All right, I think I'll start here. I like the premise. It's so simple. They're repairing gazebo. Big Mac needs some nails, and he doesn't have any, so he has to go get some. It's just a very simple story. It's got a very easy end. It's got a very easy beginning. And it goes from there. And for me, it is my favorite of the comics to date. Oh, really? No. Uh, at least in the main series. And that has a lot to do with just My Little Pony as a as a show in general. I never really get drawn into the save the world grand scale. For me, it's always the local slice of life uh, stories that are the most entertaining. And I think the show lends itself very well, and by extension, the comic does as well. Mm, that's true, that's true. For me, when I read it, it was so much fun. Big Mac is one of those characters that never speaks much. I think in total, he has a few lines, including from season 1 to 4. And in this comic, it's all him. It's himself monologuing and talking to us in his top bubble, saying what's going on, this is what he thinks, and that's interesting. And equally interesting is all the stuff happening around him. We finally get to see uh, the ponies of Ponyville when they're not running and screaming f- uh, for their lives. That is true. <laughs> running away from hordes of bunnies, destroying <laughs> the flowers, and pa- hordes of forest sprites eating everything inside. And James, what about you? Okay, you know how this show is basically slice of life in in animated format. Mm-hmm. In that this is something that hasn't transcribed yet to the comic books at least until until this arc showed up in that uh, you have like epic storylines like the Queen Chrysalis arc or uh, the Nightmare Rarity arc but then they give you these two issues where literally nothing of importance is happening it's just life happening in front of the reader there is a there is a book a Spanish book called Nothing <laughs> written by Carmen Laforet in 1944. Okay, it's a book uh, uh, that takes place during the Spanish post-war, and it's called Nothing because nothing happens at the beginning, 
nothing happens in the middle and nothing happens in the end. It's absolutely nothing. It's the day-to-day -day life of a girl trying to survive in, in the Spain of the post-war. And it's, it is incredible in how well written it is and how, how it makes a story out of nothing. This is the exact same thing with this comic is that it's Big Macintosh looking for a box of nails. And somehow they managed to stretch that for two issues, and it doesn't feel padded out, it doesn't feel preachy, it doesn't feel patronizing, it's, it feels so natural and so fitting for Big Macintosh to have this epic story just looking for a box of nails. It's unbelievable how good this is, and it definitely is one of my, uh, one of my favorites. Next to the uh, Princess Kate and Sunshine and Armor uh, story and the pirate arc. Mm -hmm. It's amongst my, my among my favorite uh, comics of the of the regular series. It's so good. That's true. That's true. I have to agree. And also with the comic itself, I, I just enjoy it because Big Mac is kind of the everyday normal man in this story where he is just waking up doing his job, and suddenly he's just thrown into this crazy day where Princess Luna wants him to be on his team, where two mares fall in love with him, and he invented the a dance. Just hijinks ensue with this one. <laughs> it's just going on your um, thing, James, about it being about nothing, Seinfeld was extremely successful on TV, and it was about pretty much nothing, and it has elements of that in it, I'm sure. Well, I will argue that Seinfeld was about nothing sometimes, because other times it went crazy with the storylines and the characters that it threw at you, that it actually became kind of like a parody of what a show about nothing should be about. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Um, but yeah, it, it gives you a sense of contrast. <laughs> yes, so you can you, you see how normal and how level-headed Big Macintosh is. Like he just tries to go through. Uh, his day-to-day -day life without having to think so much about the weird people that surround him in Ponyville. But then you start seeing all these other very, um, I wouldn't say kooky, but they're kind of like eccentric personalities. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, uh, like you have Fleetfoot falling in love with him after she bonks heads with him. <laughs> or Photo Finish uh, making, taking pictures of him dressed in that glam <laughs> kind of like Costumes like Spike cries his eyes out to to have him buy a um, a toy for him, uh, from him, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders with their fireworks ex ex exhibition. <laughs> Every single it, it's like background character in the comic. And it's only reinforced because every every so pages you see one of the main six talking in the background, and they are talking about the, recovering something called the sandstone that was <laughs> hidden in a ballet somewhere. It's like they had the most epic story, but that isn't the focus of the comic. The focus of the comic is Big Mac looking for the box of nails, mm -hmm. which is just it, 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 it's like there is another story going on here, and you're never going to know <laughs> because that's not what the comic is about. Yeah, how many people are aware that the the story that they're telling is actually a G one episode or multi part? If I remember right, really no. Is it? Oh my yes. god, I didn't know that. It was a G one My Little Pony, the end of Flutter Valley, where they uh, <laughs> they where giant bees, <laughs> my god, uh, show up and steal something called the Sunstone. So I think Twilight mentions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's sort of this multi part adventure to. Uh, Save, I think it's called Flutter Valley. It's kind of a, it kind of carries off of the My Little Pony movie, Ooh. which, depending on your perspective, may or may not be better than Equestria Girls. And the funny thing is that as there, as each of the main six is telling this story, they're telling it to characters in the background, so they're actually interacting with background characters. Mm -hmm. And that's that's probably why this comic appeals to me more than any other. One of my biggest critiques of the show is that the main six click has grown so focused that it's exclusive. No one can help. No one can help save the day. It has to be the main six. No one can solve the problem. It has to be the main six, and no one gets to talk to the main six except the main six. <laughs> True. So here we have a comic fleshing out a background character and giving plenty others a chance to just have a, a moment to shine. And you see the main six interacting with the town. And it makes it makes for a very real 
sense that this is a world. This is a world where the characters live and interact with others. Whereas I'm sorry to say in the show, it's starting to feel more like the main six exist, but they're kind of in a bubble from the rest of Equestria. I see your point. I see your point. I, I absolutely agree in that. Is that, uh, but then again, the show is constraining that it it's it, it still has that stigma that I think it will never shake it off. That it's for little kids, it's for children, so uh, they are not going to kind of expand from the safe group of six characters and Spike that they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they are never they are never going to expand out of that. But the comics yeah. are more experimental. They can allow themselves to do crazier things. Like, they can bring alternate universes. They can bring back villains. They can turn one of the main characters into a villain. Or they can make a comic book about, about, just, I, I can, I can get it. It's like the premise is so crazy that I love to say, just looking for a box of nails. It's just perfect. Yeah. And, or they can take them to a pirate island or getting inside, or getting inside a, a, a book or, it, it, the comics are give a lot more freedom, yeah. uh, while the the TV show is a lot more constrained. Mm-hmm. I I do understand and I can see your point. To me, uh, with the whole comic versus show kind of deal is the show has a set audience. It, they have a set target market they need to appeal to, and for them to well not feature the main six would be detrimental to their ratings probably. For us, we'll we enjoy it, but for the normal viewers. It will be like a what? show of, um, for example, Thundercats without Lionel in it. It will be, what? Where's Lionel? I want to see Lionel with his awesome sword. He's not there. Oh, boring show. Flip table. Well, you know, I, I, I actually disagree I with that. I disagree as well. I disagree as well. You, you first, Lycan. But, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I disagree because if you look at season three, One Bad Apple was actually an amazing episode and definitely one of my favorites from season three. Same with Just for Sidekicks. Sure, the main six were there, but they weren't the main focus in either of those episodes, and they themselves were just fantastic by themselves. No, I, I have one better than I have one better than that. Uh, in in Family Appreciation Day, the only one of the main six that you see in the whole episode is Applejack, and she's barely in it. Like she is in the episode for like two or three minutes, and she's just picking apples and preparing for the sap apples to appear. The rest of the episode, we are focused on. Uh, the Kitty Mark Crusaders and Granny Smith, mm. and it it is it is one of my absolute favorite episodes because of the emotional impact that it has, and it's so good. And something similar happens as well in uh, Hearts and Hoofs Day, where the only one of the main six that appears is uh, Twilight, and she only appears to provide the all powerful love potion that later on backfires incredibly and it, it, we have spent the entire episode focused on the QT Mark Crusaders, Cheerilee and Big Mac and it's like it, it is also one of my favorite episodes because it's so funny and it has such a strong beginning with like trying to set them up like QT Mark Crusaders, cheapers yay! <laughs> it's, it is uh, it, it is possible to do something like this in the show but I think after season 2 where season two was very experimental in this regard, but then season three and four they were playing it very safe, so that's why they uh, they decided not to leave the, the the main six out of it all that much. True, true. I do enjoy those episodes sometimes, but if you think about it like on a weekly basis, on a rating aspect, they need to hit those numbers. For example, the mysterious Merduel that episode. Oh. That one. Oh, that, that one. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that one, one. Yeah, no, <laughs> nobody really enjoyed that episode, and I'm not sure about the ratings. And for a TV station or for a network, if ratings drops, what's wrong? How can we improve on this? I know um, after the next episode, they won't correct that mistake that fast, but it takes a cue from that to improve on the future episode. So, like you said, ep- season three and season four played safe. So, yeah, I mean. To me, that's how I look at it, and I would really love to see um, Zen and the Art of Gazebo on the show to make it, you know, just let's see how they do it in show. That'll be awesome to see. To clarify, um, I'm not asking them to forget the main six for an entire episode, but what if Fluttershy had a problem and had to go to another pony for help? Mm. Not Twilight or Rainbow or Applejack or any such, someone else. You can still have your main characters. You can have uh, the stars of the show, but 
seeing them interact with someone outside the group is always a treat. That's why I love uh, that the town helps in te- in testing testing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the didn't fun- they do that in it ain't easy being breezy because Fluttish I had to rely on the other breezy to help her. Yeah, and that was another strength. Uh, one positive of that episode, no, actually, of the whole Rainbow Connection arc for me, uh, they had to reach outside the group. Yeah, which made yes, it, but... which which made it all the more funny when Twilight says, "I haven't helped anyone because I don't make friends outside of you six. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the the strange thing is that G one, back to G one with the Sunstone, the big criticism of that series was that every episode featured a new cast. Oh god! They were they were pumping through as many character names with pretty much cliche characters as possible in an effort to sell the uh, toys. Problem was that you know unlike the Transformers where you had Optimus Prime, for girls you had. Uh, a white pony with pink mane. I think she was in that one episode. I don't remember her name. That's every toy. <laughs> the problem with the original, uh, with the original My Little Pony show, was that it was generic character after generic character, uh, with just changing the 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 way the the hair looked or the way that the the the, the color of their bodies or. Sometimes they even kept the same voice, if I remember correctly. So it is difficult to grow an attachment to that character. That is true. And now that they have kept the, the, the same cast, that's good as well. But like you said, if they don't get out of the same group, then that, that doesn't say much. You mm-hmm. need to expand your, um, uh, your limits. You, don't ha- you cannot stay within the same circle. We need a balance, a compromise. Yes, mm, true. It was good that they brought that with the Rainbow Connection arc. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm noticing that we're not talking about the comic that much. Um, and I don't think, James, you gave the synopsis for this one yet, have you? Well, what synopsis is there? Big Macintosh goes to Ponyville to look for a box of nails because the casivo is broken. <laughs> That's it. That's the story. Everything else that happens is an absolute array of random events that prevent him to reach his goal. <laughs> Only to discover that in the end, the goal was there to begin with. There is a lot of... It's called Sen and the Art of Gazebo Reaper for a reason. There is a lot of philosophical <laughs> implications in the narrative of this comic. Um, but no, is that the, the, the thing is that it is literally uh, a story about nothing. But that doesn't mean it's boring. Okay. Or it doesn't mean it's, it, it, it's dry. Like, it's chock full of references. Uh, aside from the obligatory fringe reference with the observers, of course, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, there are references to Sherlock. There are references to Doctor Who. Uh, obviously, Doctor Who and, and Derp, Doctor Who's and Derpy, they share a, uh, a panel <laughs> together at one point, a random background event. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can see Diamond, Tiara, and Silver Spoon and the, at the Doctor's office, like in the Peanuts comic books, mm-hmm. yes. Oh my god, Trixie makes an appearance retelling the events of Bose Busters, but in a, from her perspective where she's the hero. Um, it's, just, it, it's, it's endless. There is, a, there is a, a, a stand in the fair where they are selling plasmids and, and bigors from Bioshock. What? Really? I mean, the, yes, yes, the, yeah? the, there is a stand that says plasmids and bigors, and of course the plasmids are, are from Bioshock 1, and the bigors are from Bioshock Infinite. It is such a cool... Uh, it's like, it is background character, the comic, <laughs> but it's also background event, the comic. It's awesome. And there's even Bluth's Frozen Bananas from Arrested Development in there. That, that's a very obscure reference, which not many people get, but it's amazing to see it in there. And I think the thing about this comic is that it's not about the destination. The story is about it's the journey. journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the moral of the story to begin with, because the Kura says to Big Mac, what did you learn from this day? And Big Mac thought about it, and he said it was a sucky day. And if when he really thinks about it, it was fun. And he had a lot of fun doing the things he did, so he carried on. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. Also, the moral of the story is Big Mac gets all the mares. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Big Mac gets all the mares. Oh, oh um, my god, that... That is plus page where <laughs> Fleetfoot is just imagining oh, a life yeah. with Big Macintosh. And then when they are bandaging her head, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> Miss Big Apple something, something. <laughs> the bridesmaids oh. will all be cinnamon. Oh, my God. We also had that strange tea pony. 
that want that dreams of a life as a secret agent with Pig oh, Macintosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't oh. even know her name. I'm sure the fandom has given her a name. I think if we really look at the toys, we can find her. Maybe I'm not 100 percent sure. Which uh, which page are you talking about? I'm looking at the comic man. Issue I'm ten. For the... It was issue ten. The other mayor that um, falls in love with Big Mac at the whole down. Through head trauma oh, yeah. mm-hmm. again. Oh <laughs> yes, trauma. the yeah 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 ah, ah. yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah. This one I didn't notice the the TQT mark, and at the beginning I thought she was like dewdrop dazzle or something like that. <laughs> yes, the teacup oh. with the heart on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yes, the, the scene that ensues after that is like Fleetfoot and her cat fighting, literally, like cats. <laughs> Big Macintosh just knocks them into elation and love. <laughs> no. uh, but Although I... we, all, we, all, we also forget Big Mac's omnipresent stalker, <laughs> who, has, who has pursued him across several issues. <laughs> of course, uh, refers to the... Flip... the the ice cream Twilight Sparkle recolor. Ooh. Oh, yes, yes. Um, what, what's her name again? I don't know if she's ever been named, but uh, it's on the page where, in, a, in another homage to Peanuts, Big Mac and... Into- oh, no, Family Circus. That you trace Big Mac's uh, path through the fair. C- caper tossing, splinter removal, breaks the bell, and pays ten bits. Oh, All yes. This- Accidentally enters a time warp, saves Ponyville from mutant apes, returns oh. five minutes earlier. That one, yeah, the kiss, kiss for one for, bit. Kiss is for, yeah, kiss is for one bit. Yeah, from one page. <laughs> and uh, she, she's been in several issues, and she must be a stalker because he is just terrified of her. <laughs> you know what? You're Angel, absolutely right. Abort, because, abort. And, I, and I am trying to remember her name now because there is a blind bag of this character. Seriously? Yeah, 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 there are blind bags of this one. Hang on a minute, I am... It's bothering me now, I need to look for this. <laughs> well, you do that, we carry on with the talks. I, I don't know, I mean, hearing us talk about this comic right now, it seems like we're just running around in circles trying to find a point where there is no point. It's just a guy looking for a box of nails. That's about it. <laughs> and hijinks in you in the middle. That's the whole nature of it. You know, stuff happens, and there's no rising tension, there's no... Bigger conflict. Well, apparently he saves the world from mutant apes, so good for him. <laughs> and, now, and we don't even get to see that. <laughs> the reference of, like, I'm thinking, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it has to be it. But it's funny, in, in a conflict-driven, you know, we have to beat the bad guy tale, we're all waiting for them to beat the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, With this one, we kind of have permission to just enjoy the meandering and spot the many, many references <laughs> And I love how a Miss D. Hooves made Home Sweet Home out of the uh, changeling cocoon <laughs> that held her. Yes, that is just which strange. was absolutely hilarious. The comics written by Andy, uh, written by Katie Cook and, and drawn by Andy Price, they have their own continuity because they will make reference to to the the, the other ones that they have worked on. Mm, true, true. And um, what I was about to say was, um, I do enjoy Bok Biceps' appearance in this, like. Uh, he says, "You are you ready to buff up?" And nope, nope, yeah, nope, yeah. And that panel by itself is already funny because uh, how bulk bicep hulks out at the, the end. The is over top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's done end, really well. Sorry? It's done really well how they all stay in character despite mm. all these background ponies and everything. They're all in character. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure there's much character for Big Mac to stay in from the show. Mm. But it's uh, but they do carry forward that quiet, just focused uh, pony. He's not uh-huh. antisocial. He's just really, really fixated. <laughs> okay. And Jim, you I, found it? I found it. I found it. It's the sweet cream scoops. <laughs> sweet cream scoops. Sweet cream scoops. Oh, my. That's a muffle. Yes, there it is sweet cream. There you are. Sweet, sweet cream scoops. That's her name. Oh, it's the Twilight yeah. Sparkle Recolor, and it's a blind bag. Yes, I found it. I need to get and it so a, I can ship them. And it's also a tongue twister. Uh, We're already calling her Sweet Scream. Sweet Scream. Yep. Scoop the... Yep, yep. Uh, it, but yeah, I knew I saw it somewhere. Oh my God, it was bothering me for like 
15 minutes, <laughs> and now it's finally gone. Mm. And, <gasps> and, and you know what, gents? I, I think we should just blur out what we really enjoy about this comic. Before you do that, there is one topic where I'm a little shaky. Okay. But I'm not sure. Spike. Go for it. Spike. <laughs> Who? The, the wi- <laughs> uh, that's what a lot of people <laughs> like to say. <laughs> but this, if I remember, this comic came out after the Rarity Micro. Oh, really? Was it? Just like, um, I, I think it was like a month after, or? Yes, yes, yeah. Because the Rarity Micro came out at the same time as the Rarity, Nightmare Rarity arc. Oh, okay. And this, this arc came right after that one. So, yeah, 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 it's after. Go ahead. So, going after the events of uh, the Rarity Micro, Spike was kind of a villain <laughs> in in that and in the rare at the at that little bonus story at the end of the rarity micro and now carry forward to here where he is now a better con artist than the flim flam brothers when he starts crying for oh my god buy one of my toys nobody <laughs> buys me any of my toys oh thank you here's your here's your toy Not that, and then he has a pile of money there's ah. another money this chick is making a mo- this chick is getting everybody in Conoville <laughs> um, and I guess that's the one weird thing. While while in the show we're all complaining that Spike is becoming the butt of many jokes, and uh, we don't. I think I think a lot of fans dislike that. Here, Spike is becoming a, a scoundrel. <laughs> I would say so. scoundrel, but I think is he's becoming a much better. Um, per, uh, po- I don't know, say better, but he's he has personality in this. <laughs> You know what? For the credit of Andy, Andy Price and Katie Cook, this is probably the most screen time they have given Spike mm-hmm. within one of their stories to keep him within the story and not being an, out- an outside narrator. Um, <laughs> because in the in, in the C- Queen Chrysalis arc, he was there, but he was kind of like narrating the story, and then he showed up with Princess Celestia. Mm-hmm. And then in in this one, he's kind of like a narrator as well, doesn't he? Isn't he like with Angel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, telling the story on the sidelines. Yeah, and with Batman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even does the transitions between the comics. Um, it's got his little talk, and mm-hmm. it um, cracks the puns there. But I will say, in the comic himself, um, in the comic, uh, Spike, we have seen Spike's greed before. So him being a scoundrel at the fair and taking everyone's money, it's probably nothing new. True, true. Nothing new, but he turned into a giant dragon fueled by his own greed at that point. This one, he's just, he's making a tiny buck, but then he doesn't have to Tiny? <laughs> tiny. I'm sorry, that isn't tiny. He has more money than Scrooge McDuck on that stand, okay? <laughs> okay. You know what, you know what? Here's, here's, here's the deal, here's the deal. I'm thinking the reason why... Spike is getting all that money is because the way Twilight treats the treehouse. Have you seen its condition? It's perfect. Why Spike? That's why. <laughs> he probably spends all of the money on quills. Yep. Quill. And ice cream. <laughs> and, and, and chocolate ice cream, yeah. Oh, true. And sofas. <laughs> and sofas. Oh my god, yeah. sofas. But, but anywho, um, let's move on from this and talk about the things we like. And I'm going to go first. In the first appearance of Luna, her shirt is just awesome. <laughs> blame my sister. Uh, yep. Blame my sister. And Batman logo. No, yeah. the Star Trek logo then. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and god. And then the panel over there, it shows Vinyl Scratch singing a song. And that song is a Beatles song. Let's see here. I'm looking for the first appearance. Mostly I know her telling everyone to do the Navigator. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, everyone yeah. everybody do the navigator. Oh that was so good. Oh, yes. That was so good. I mean this comic is all about scenes. Like oh if you take a close look at um Luna's night um Luna's uh night guard, he takes care of the whatchamacallit, he takes care of the horseshoes. horseshoes. He wipes the princess's face. And then at the end when Twilight hugs Big Mac real tight, you can see him go I roll like ugh, like he may have a crush, <laughs> and then yeah, he gets a little smoochy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. And then she goes on to get to do a treasure hunt, and Big Mac leaves, and I'm like, no, I want to see Luna doing the treasure hunt. It has to be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, but you, but that's the thing. The thing that we want to see more, they say, nope, you're not getting it. <laughs> we need to end this. Let's move on to the issue ten. <laughs> Well, isn't that the appeal of this show in a way to tease us with 
a world and we want to know more, but true, it, true, it's always true. just sort of out there. True. That, that, that has been the theme for the whole comic, really. The, the things that we really want to see, they're not giving us because we need to move on. We need to progress the story. What about you guys? All right. I really like references. The comic is just full of references, references, references. It's like a huge book of Where's Wally. You got to try and spot everything that they've put into the background, <laughs> or even the little minuscule details have some kind of reference, and be like, "Oh yeah, I know where that's from," or you see something else and like, "Oh, that's so awesome! I'm glad to see it in there." I spent so much time just looking through the comic at the art, at the references, and trying to enjoy everything that had gone into it. That's true, that's true. And um, here's another quick bit, if you guys didn't see. Um, on the page, I forgot what page is it, but it's on issue 10, and Photo Finish is selling her art of Big Mac, and you can see Fitfoot buying buying a picture. And Photo Finish already ranked in 500 bits. So... There's a lot of mares who are into the Big Mac. <laughs> Everybody's Mac in it. Yep. <laughs> oh, you. Everybody's yes, into me. Mac. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to say. This, I, I enjoyed this book. Like, a book about nothing, I enjoyed it very much. But anyway, um, that's enough for me. And Lycan, did you say yours, right? Yep. All right. Um, Silver, what about you? Cutie Mark Crusader Arsonists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They just uh, the, when they cause that first explosion and the boom is a physical uh, <laughs> presence. You can look at Sweetie Belle's face. This is a pony who wants to set the world on fire. <laughs> Isn't there a song? I don't want to set the world on fire. <laughs> yep. Sometimes. sometimes Sweetie Belle, so I actually do. <laughs> Yeah. I want to burn a little universe. <laughs> oh, uh, oh my God! Uh, yes, and it's it's one of the few running jokes. I mean, we've got little little vignettes of comedy, but this is a running joke until it cl- it culminates with them successfully lighting the fireworks. So even then, there's a feeling of triumph for them. Mm-hmm. They've just blown up half of Ponyville to do it. <laughs> I just like the third one, or was it the second one, where it wasn't even Sweetie Belle's fault. Like, Snip was trying to prove a point, and yeah, he did. And the ending, oh my. <laughs> Given what we see in the show, the the little micro-disasters that they've caused, mm-hmm. it feels totally in character. The fact that these three have not been run out of town is a small <laughs> miracle and a testament to Ponyville's patience. <laughs> and you know what, I, I'm guessing they're just um, taking up the insurance by that point, you know, like, oh, you know, my insurance, since I don't use it, why not, right? <laughs> well, there raises a question. How how much is insurance in Ponyville where you have dragons, parasites, nightmare, and demons? <laughs> you uh, know what? I think, I think insurance stones. companies, insurance companies, they, they, they had to all close down after season one because <laughs> they all went bankrupt. There is not enough money to cover all the damages. It's Twilight's so, fail-safe spell. Which failed. <laughs> It failed massively, so... Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <sighs> but, anywho, James, what about you? Uh, you know how I say this? Uh, that there are many... When talking about episodes of this show, like, this episode is saved for the details, or this episode is, is a great episode just for the details, or something, 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 details. Mm-hmm. And uh, the details are what make a world huge that that's something that Guillermo del Toro said when talking about any of his movies is that details are what make the world a bigger place uh, because they tell a story in a very short amount of time this is that's this comic it builds so much with tiny little splotches of life everywhere Big Mac looks and everywhere we we move with uh, with him throughout the story and it's just a walk down main street in the middle of a fair, and it's so full of life. It feels so natural, and it feels so organic. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It is. It, it's. It's every single detail. Every single detail is my favorite moment on this comic. So, it, it's no wonder I will call it one of my one of my absolute favorites, <laughs> just because of the details. Like from the movie references to the 
uh, uh, little touches of like oh, finally we see Octavia speaking for once. <laughs> it's yep, yep. It, things like that that make me really happy. I'm like, yeah, this is this is such a happy comic. It is such a happy comic. Mm, it yeah, is it true. is great. So yeah, the the details are my favorite moment of of the entire comic. Mm. No doubt about it. Oh, Every cool. time I reread it, I find something new, something <laughs> different, something awesome to love about it all over again. Yeah, it's something. It's it's a comic that you want to go back to, that you want to reread, that you want to re uh, re experience. Yeah, I I totally agree, and it's not a bad comic at all. I mean, if I were to buy a physical comic, I would get this one. So. I think it's pretty anon- uh, it's pretty unanimous that everyone here enjoyed the comic, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, a safe bet. Yes, that it it's definitely one of the best, if not the best, the comic out of the out of the main series. That's great. So, okay, now next one we're going to be reviewing another of the micro comics. Uh, it's going to be uh, Best Pony's Micro, starring Best Pony, and it's titled Best Pony's Best Pony because Best Pony. Uh, I'm talking about the Rarity Micro, by the way. Um, <laughs> Rarity, that's a strange way of saying Rainbow Dash. Uh, oh, shut up. <laughs> but we're going to be reviewing that one written by uh, Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price as well I told you that we were going on an Andy uh, Andy Price Katie Cook spree and that one is going to come next week so uh, guys thank you so much for uh, listening to us and uh, thank you so much for picking up this little podcast to listen to our opinions I have been James Cork and some uh, wrap up some uh, wrap up <laughs> Thank you, Norman. And I am Lycan. Thank you for having me on the show. And I'm Silver Quill, and I won't subject you to my singing. <laughs> it's definitely not worse than Norman's. Oh, okay. See you later, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Adios. Bye.